Hi everybody, it's Violet Kitty. In my early 20s, for about two years, I became what I now euphemistically call an accidental vegetarian. Because of the cost of meat, I quit purchasing meat in the grocery store. And over the course of a few months, I slowly phased out meat from all areas of my life until I wasn't eating any. And I didn't even realize that I was doing it until somebody said to me, well, you're a vegan, aren't you? Which kind of took me aback, and I thought, no. And I said, no, I just don't eat meat. During this time, I learned everything I could about vegetarian living. I talked about it to other people and encouraged them to consider it for their own life. I lived as a vegetarian. But I never was a vegetarian, because I had never made a commitment on either a moral or health basis to stop eating meat. After a couple years, I did reintegrate meat back into my diet, and I don't eat much anymore. But this isn't really about being a vegetarian. This is about authenticity. Authenticity in the Christian faith. You've often heard it said that if you're going to talk the talk, you better walk the walk. There's a lot of people out there that talk a good game. But there's something that seems to be missing. Reputation is what the world sees. Character and integrity are what God sees. And following God when no one is looking... That is the person that is the Christian. How do we recognize it? One would say, look for the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And the fruits are patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faith, joy, love, peace, and self-control. But many Christians seem to be manifesting dry and withered fruit that is no better than a non-Christian would manifest. That's one thing that we need to look for. But it's hard to make the decision based on that. So then you think, what about the gifts of the Holy Spirit? The gifts of hospitality, helps, healing, tongues, prophecy, administration, martyrdom. What about these gifts? Well, there is, and I do believe very much in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but some of them can be faked, and some of them can be bestowed by Satan. So, while I'm not undermining the gifts of the Holy Spirit, the manifestation of them alone is not proof of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Where the rubber meets the road on the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is submission. Absolute submission to the Holy Spirit. Some people say, okay, God, I'm going to give you 6% of my heart. That's an hour a day. It's all yours. But don't go outside that 6% because that's mine. They're not truly submitted. Submission to the Holy Spirit receives rebuke. It obeys the law. We are called as Christians to obey the law. Christ said, do not believe I came to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. And if you read the book of Romans, the very, very resounding theme is that while we are not under the law, inasmuch as we can, we must abide by it. A friend of mine said something really wonderful. She said, I believe that grace and legalism 
need to walk hand in hand. Christ came to give us freedom from sin, not freedom to sin. And when we've sinned, many cases, there are very, very real corrections that we must make in order to please God. If we've despised one area of the law, we have despised it all. And as I said in my poem, He will judge harshly those that despise the law. He will withhold His blessings. He will rain curses on those that despise the law. This is a situation where the Holy Spirit is begging you to return to Him. When I sinned, I groaned day and night, the psalmist said. This was because the Holy Spirit was tormenting him with his sin. Tormenting. However, if you sin and you're not being tormented by the Holy Spirit, and you're not being convicted to obey the law as laid out, there is a problem. Either you've suppressed the Holy Spirit so much that you have no sensitivity to Him whatsoever, or He has never indwelled you. We all go through times when we're less sensitive to the Holy Spirit and we don't hear His call. These are the ebbs and flows of the Christian walk. But we should always at some point be sensitive to that call so we come back when we hear him calling and in some cases yes he is going to torment us with his love and that's what he does he torments us with his love calling us back unto him because of who he is and he will nag at you and not let you go until you submit completely. He doesn't want 6%. Christ said, In my Father's house there are many, many rooms, and I go and prepare a place for you, so where I am, there you may also be. We will have full reign of His home in paradise. Why don't we give Him full reign? of our heart here on earth in the castle of our heart he should be enthroned not contained in an apartment and that is what's happening people are like yep I'm going to give you this much of my life and that's all God because the rest is mine I am going to pursue my happiness I am going to pursue living in the flesh I am going to live in the world instead of pursuing happiness or holiness excuse me instead of living in the spirit instead of living by the word these last three are proof of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and it comes down to our obedience and submission to the Holy Spirit we are required in as much as we can to obey. We have to submit wholly to the Holy Spirit in order to achieve the riches that He would have for us here on earth. And I don't mean monetary riches. I mean spiritual riches. That's just a foretaste of what he has for us to come. And that's all I have to say. He came out.